Section 3.2, Truth Tables for Negation, Conjunction, and Disjunction. So we're going to start creating truth tables in this section, and I'll give you some pointers on how to do that. A truth table is used to determine when a compound statement is true or false. So if someone tells you a phrase, you need to break it down into multiple parts and use the truth value from each statement to deter determine if the entire statement is true. The first thing you're going to deal with is the negation. So remember the negation is read as not P. When dealing with the negation, if the P statement is true, then the negation of that statement will be false. If the P statement is false, then the negation of that statement is true. So in other words, the negation of P will always have the opposite truth value of regular P. So for example, if I said Disney World is in Florida, that's my statement P, that statement is true. So the negation of P, Disney World is not in Florida, would be false. This table is just a summary of what we just stated. So your statement has two, uh, two cases. Your statement can either be a true statement or a false statement. If your statement is true, the negation of that statement will be false. If the statement you make is false, the negation of your statement will be true. If you have a compound statement, that means you have two phrases that are connected together. There's four cases that you can get. Both of your statements could be true. Your first statement could be true and your second false. Your first statement could be false and your second true. Or both of the statements you make could be false. This is going to come into play when we do truth tables for conjunction and disjunction. Remember that conjunction, P and Q, is um, only true when both P and Q are true. So the conjunction truth table is going to look like this. Case one, if both of your statements you make are true, then the conjunction of that statement will be true. But in any other scenario, if the second statement's false, if your first statement is false, or if both statements are false, the conjunction of the two statements will be false. Disjunction, which is read P or Q, is going to be true whenever P is true, or whenever Q is true, or whenever ever both P and Q are true. So basically, the only time the conjunction is false is when both P and Q are false. So the truth values for a disjunction will look like this. If your first and second statements are true, the con um, disjunction will be true. If the first is true and the second is false, your disjunction will be true. If the first statement is false and your second statement is true, your disjunction will be true. And the only time the disjunction is going to be false is if both the statements in your compound statement are false. So let's look at creating a generic truth table and see if you're getting the idea of this. Okay, so in this one, we are going to do the negation of the group the negation of Q disjunction P. So not Q or P negated. Okay, so what I like to do, and I sometimes do mine a little different, I use what's called the alternative method, but I like to map everything out. Um, so the first thing I do when I go to make my T table is I list what my statements are. You do want to list them in alphabetical order. Okay, so I have statement, oop, I have statement P and I have statement Q. And you just want to list these generic. So when you have two statements, there are four ways that um, you can answer. They can be both true, you could have a true false, you could have a false true, or you could have a false false. Okay? Then I look and I work my way from the inside out. So first I'm going to start with the parentheses. And I need to figure out what the negation of Q is first. So I'm going to make a negation of Q column. So all I have to do to figure out what the negation of Q is, is look at the Q column and make everything the opposite. 
So the Q column is true, false, true, false. So the opposite of that is false, true, false, true. Then I need to find the negation of Q or P. So I make a new column for the negation of Q or P. So when I do that, I'm going to look at the negation of Q first, and I'm going to look at the P column second, and I'm going to follow the truth values of disjunction. So disjunction is always true unless both the first and second statements are false. So remember, you have to go in order. So my first statement is false. My second statement is true. I did get a true value in one of the statements, so the disjunction would be true. First statement's true, second statement's true, that creates a true value. First statement is false, second statement is false, that is the only time the negation is false, or excuse me, the disjunction is false. First statement's true, second statement's false, that makes a true statement. Then I need to go one step further. I need to take what I just found and negate it. So I need to do the opposite of what I just found. So the final answer will be false, false, true, false. And you've just created a truth table. Now it seems a little weird, like what exactly do you have here? Well, what you would do is you would um, use this um, to analyze someone's argument. So, you know, if somebody had a true statement and a true statement, so um, Florida is in the United States, Disney World is in Florida. Those are your two statements. And then they went through and they anal you could analyze it. And if they phrased something about Disney World and Florida in this way, you could determine that it is a false statement. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, this actually asks us to use the alternative method. That's what I just showed you. I typically always use the alternative method because um, it's just how I am used to creating truth tables. So this time we want the negation of P and the negation of Q, and we want to develop a truth table. So again, we have two statements. We have statement P and we have statement Q. If you have a statement, uh, if you have a compound statement that has two items in it, there's four different ways you can answer the question. So <clears throat> one way you can figure that out, you can take two raised to the number of statements that you have. Since we have two statements, we'll take two to the fourth power. There's going to be four different combinations for ways we can answer. So under the P column, we'll put true, true, false, false. And under the Q column, true, false, true, false. <clears throat> now, we need to figure out what the negation of P is. We also need to figure out what the negation of Q is. And then once we know what those are, then we can do the conjunction, the negation of P and the negation of Q. So let's just first start with the negations. So to negate P, I just need to look at the P column, which is true, true, false, false. And I'll do the opposite of that. False, false, true, true. To do the negation of Q, I look at the Q column, which was true, false, true, false, and I will do the opposite, false, true, false, true. And then to do the conjunction, I need to look at the not P and not Q. So we get a false and false, that's false, false and true, that's false false, because remember, a conjunction is only true if both statements are true. We have a true and false. That's false. And we have a true and true. That is the only time conjunction is true. So the only time not Q and not P would make a true statement 
was if both the original phrase had P and Q both starting out false. I wanted to show you um, one more example. And this one's going to have three phrases in it. Our first phrase is Santa is home. So we're going to let Santa is home be statement P. Our second phrase is he is not at his desk. He is not at his desk is going to be statement Q. And our third phrase is he is sleeping. We're going to let he is sleeping be R. Now see how we have three phrases in this problem? So if we take two and raise it to the third power, there's going to be eight possible ways to combine the trues and falses of three phrases. So I always do the P column first. If I need to come up with eight different combinations, I'm going to need four trues and four falses. And then in my Q column, I'll do two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. And then in the R column, I'll alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, now I need to put my connectives in the problem. Santa is home and he is not at his desk. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is figure out not at his desk. So remember, at the desk was Q. So I need to do not Q. And then once I have not Q, I need to do the connective Santa is home and not Q. <clears throat> so Santa is home is represented by P. So we need to do P and not Q. And then once I have that answer, we need to connect that with the connective or. Now notice there's a comma after at his desk. So they're telling you that P and not Q is in a set of parentheses on the left side of the connective or. And that he is sleeping is on the right side of the connective. Okay, so whatever we get in that last column is going to be our truth values. Okay, so not Q is not going to be terrible. I just need to look at the Q column and do the opposite. So the opposite of the Q column is false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true. Then I need to do the conjunction P and not Q. So I have a true, false, that one makes false. Because remember, the and is only true if they're both true. True, false. True, true. True, true. False, false. False, false. False, true. False, true. Okay. Now that I have the left side of the expression, I need to take the left side of the expression and the R column. So I need to take the P and not Q, and I need to take the R, and I need to do the disjunction, the OR. Now remember, the OR is only false if um, they're both false. Okay, so remember, you need to do the P and not Q first. So we have a tr false, true, false, false. That's going to make a false. True, true. True, false. False, true. False, false. That is false. False, true. And false, false. So this last column in purple is going to be considered your solution to your truth table.
Now, sometimes they'll ask you to determine the truth value of a statement without going through and creating this, um, the whole truth table, because that can sometimes be a little bit time consuming. Um, so don't let this throw you. You approach the problem the exact same way. Okay, so determine the truth value for each simple statement. Then using these truth values, determine the truth value of the compound statement. Okay, so the first statement is one million dollars is greater than or equal to one billion. Okay, so notice the or equal to. So you're going to have to break this up into two statements. Okay, Oops. so our first statement that we're going to work with is that one million dollars is greater than one billion dollars. So one million is greater than one billion. That's statement P. Then we have to do the other option, which is that one million dollars is equal to one billion dollars. One million is equal to one billion. That is statement Q. Now we have to write this in symbolic form. So one million dollars is greater than or equal to one billion dollars. So that would be P or Q. Now, you do not have to go through and construct a whole truth table if you don't want to, because you know whether these statements are true or false. One million dollars is greater than one billion dollars. That is a false statement. If I had a billion dollars in the bank and all they gave me was a million, I'd be upset. One million dollars is equal to one billion dollars. That is a false statement. <clears throat> so we're looking for the or category between two false items. If you have an or with two false items, it is going to be false. So this statement would be false. And I found that out without having to do a truth table. Let's look at one more example. So we're going to determine the truth value for each simple statement, then we're going to use their truth values to figure out if the whole compound statement is true or false. Okay? So Angelina Jolie is an actress. Okay, so Angelina Jolie is an actress. We're going to call that statement P. Zac Efron is a janitor. Okay, Zac Efron being a janitor is going to be statement Q. Johnny Depp is not a plumber. So we're going to have Johnny Depp being a plumber, statement R. Okay, now let's go through those at just face value. Okay, is Angelina Jolie an actress? Yes, she is. That is a true statement. Is Zac Efron a janitor? No, he's not. That is a false statement. Is Johnny Depp a plumber? No, Johnny Depp's not a plumber. That is a false statement. So now that we know the true values of the statements, now we can build the compound statement. So we have Anna, Angelina is an actress or Zac Efron is a janitor. So Angelina is an actress or Zac Efron is a janitor. Um, notice the comma. You should put that in a set of parentheses. But is another word for and. Johnny Depp is not a plumber, so not R. Okay, so let's first figure out the P or Q truth value, and then we'll figure out the not R truth value, and then last we'll figure out the truth value of the conjunction, okay? So P or Q, you have a true and you have a false. As long as one of them is true, P or Q will be true. Not R. Not R is going to be the opposite of false, which is true. 
So we are doing a conjunction, which is and, and in a conjunction, as long as they are both true, the conjunction is true. So this statement is a true is a true statement. Angelina Jolie is an actress, or Zac Efron is a janitor, but Johnny Jepp is not a plumber. True statement. 